Hey everyone, Mr. Crystal here, reviewing Star Fox Command for the originally for the 3DS, now for the Wii U eShop. Um, I just downloaded this game. It's ten dollars on the store, nine ninety nine, and uh, as you can see, it's got the both screens there on the uh, on the big screen. I've never tried the virtual console version for the for the DS games, so this will be interesting. Now, I already played this this game uh, earlier, and I'm now recording the voiceover separately, so this is my recollection, recollection of what I tried. Just wanted to check with the controls, because it'll let you use inverse controls if you want, but I'm going to use the standard controls because uh, it's touchscreen rather than using the joystick. Personally, I think the lack of a joystick was not a good idea for uh, a Star Fox game, but... They were trying to make use of the uh, two screens. Okay, here's the story. Years ago, a scientist named Dr. Andros became obsessed with controlling the Lilat system. He launched wave after wave of attack fighters from remote planet, planet Venom and ordered them to strike the planet Corneria, the heart of the Lilat system. However, four brave pilots who made up a squadron known as Star Fox finally put an end to the doctor's mad ambitions. Andros himself was defeated by the leader of Star Fox, the brilliant pilot named Strox McCloud. In a time that followed, Venom became known as a quarantine planet. Due to that reputation and the frequent patrols carried out by members of the Cornarian military, it has been years since anyone has set foot, foot on the planet's surface. But after a period of quiet, Venom struck back with devastating attacks on the Lilat system. Any and all attempts at resistance were brushed aside, and soon cities became under the grip of a new terrifi terrifying enemy. The occupiers were known as the Anglars and operated under the control of the Anglar Emperor. Their headquarters were located in the toxic Venom Sea, a vast ocean so inhospitable that it was believed no living thing could survive there. The members of Star Fox, the heroic and famous squadron that had come to Lilat's aid in their her hour of need, had disbanded. Each pilot was living a new life and it would prove difficult task to bring former member te team members back together. Fox McCloud, the team's leader, was watering the galaxy with his friend Rob, a navigation robot that he inherited after his father's passing. Fox used this time to tie up a few loose ends and also ponder the course his life had taken. The Cornarian military hero, General Pepper, fell ill and could no longer lead as, the, as he once did. He recommended Peppy Hare, Star Fox team leader, uh, team member and father figure to Fox, to be promoted to command of all Cornarian forces. Brash pilot Falco Lombardi lived as a loner. He drifted from job to job searching for the same thrill he felt as a member of Star Fox, but his existence was mostly an empty one something that annoyed him more than he would admit. The technical brains behind the team, Fox's closest friend, the good-natured Slippy Toad, uh, Slippy met and fell in love with a girl named Amanda and decided to leave the world of flying and start a new life with his beloved fiance. Star Wolf, the true rivals of Star Fox, continued to be involved in dirty dealings. Their work soon caught the attention of the Cornarian military, who put a massive bounty on their heads. And finally, Crystal, the lone female of the group. She had fought alongside Fox and fell in love with him, much against her better judgment and the professional concern. Uh, her love was returned, however, and the two promised to remain together always. But Fox was quiet, quite wary of the danger that haunted pilots in the elite Star Fox squadron, and he eventually forced Crystal to leave the team. Heartbroken and ashamed, she fled from Fox and vanished soon after. No one knows what became of her. Now the past has come to haunt them all. Unwilling to or unable to face his former team, Fox has chosen to take on the entire Anglar Armada himself. But can he do it? Will the team just put aside their differences and reunite? All Lilat awaits their answers. Okay, so we get into the actual uh, beginning of the story, where uh, Rob and Fox are discussing the situation and how they're going to attack this uh, this uh, first first defense of Corn Area. Now I'm going to play through a couple of missions here, uh, two to be precise, just to show uh, most of the mechanics in the game, for those of you who haven't played it before. I want to mention at this point that this is the second game, or this is the first time ever that a game featuring Crystal was re-released. And if you haven't played this game, even though um, it's quite well known that this is not the best entry in the series, I still recommend you play it as a Star Fox fan both for the history um, of the game, of the series that is in this, and all the characters, but also because it's actually a pretty good uh, representation of what Star Fox 2 was supposed to be. 
minus some transformations, of course. That you'll get in the uh, the new Star Fox game coming to the Wii U, Star Fox Zero, which was just announced at E3 2015. So uh, it looks like uh, uh, Rob and, and uh, Fox are showing off uh, what the main mechanic is going to be, which is, believe it or not, barrel rolling. Unlike every other game in the series, barrel rolling plays an absolutely critical uh, role in this game. You literally cannot beat the game without... Uh, doing a lot of barrel rolls. And so we're going to skip the training here and go straight on to the mission. So here we go. Heading on to Corneri. Alright, so first, they tell us the situation and we're going to look at the battlefield and decide how we're going to move our troops. You get some ships. Right now it's just one ship, Fox. But uh, on most missions you get two to four, I think maybe even more than that on some missions, to to attack enemies and uh, gather items and form a defense of the area and your ship, uh, the Great Fox, which is actually doesn't look like a fox anymore at all. It's a new ship because it was as you well know, destroyed at the end of assault. But uh, you have to you have to protect this 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 red and white ship, or uh, the mission is immediately over. You also get a, no, a set number of turns per mission, and if you run out of turns or time, it's everything is also time too. It's you really have to manage a lot of stuff here, and uh, it's kind of, it's actually pretty stressful, especially as the missions get more complicated. Another thing you'll notice. That you won't notice here is this is the first missions of Corneria. It's a very simple map, okay? But after you beat the game about five times, um, it actually changes the missions. And I, maybe all of them, maybe just some of them, but definitely the first mission. And those missions become immensely harder. In fact, I actually can't beat the first one. Okay, so here I'm, I'm breaking out here and showing the menu that comes up. And showing that there are many different play styles that you can choose to show the uh, the the images for the game, because as you know, uh, DS has two screens. Now, um, this is a really cool one. If you want to turn your monitor on its side, you get the biggest possible view. And this is cool if you want to have two screens separately, uh, specifically for that. That's the default right there. Um, the DS. Now, I'm going to use. I'm going to tend to use this one. It's pretty good. I would like to use this one. I actually would like to use this version, and I did try it for a second there, only to realize I had to put it back, uh, and you'll see why in a moment. But before that, let's look at the manual. This is actually going to load up the manual for us that came with the original game in PDF form. So that'll load up. Um, it's it's literally the entire manual uh, in high resolution. So we can just scroll on through that. Zoom in and out. There's the story, as you just saw. It may not look like high resolution, but you can zoom in, and I'll show that in just a second. Yeah, just mostly how to play the game. Not much in the way of story um, in manuals these days. But I'll show you a bit about um, the Star Fox characters. Another, an interesting thing about this game, unlike any other game, is that the the individual characters have very specific um, ships that have different capabilities, um, different stats, and different weapons, different uh, capacities for bombs and the like. There's our beloved crystal, of course. And so we'll head back to the game here. Uh, and I actually, at this point, remember, I actually I do need to put the settings back. And the reason is not because I don't like that, but because rather um, you have to play the game using the left trigger. Uh, to control the gun, uh, to, to, to shoot lasers, and you use the motion controls to aim. And you'll see in a moment as I start my first mission that uh, I am way out of practice. Okay, I went into this blind. I haven't practiced the game at all. Oh, here's, here's I'm trying the drawing the line multiple times, just trying to get a better uh, attack line. Um, the more li you can draw the line as many times as you want, and sometimes you can make the line just slightly better, which can save you whole turns if you do it right. So anyway, we didn't encounter any enemies yet. We used a whole turn to get there. So now we're going to go as Fox and probably get the rest of the enemies here. So 
it's warning us we got to keep the protect the great fox or we'll get shot or it'll get shot down all right so here's what it's going to look like that's my flight path actually i'm going to change it a little bit because in case i miss one you can overshoot and they'll miss you entirely but most of the time if you go through the errors they notice you and they follow you most enemies are quite aggressive towards your ships see that so i'm actually going to have two enemy engagements at once in this turn you have to collect those little star things, and the best way to do that is to kill the enemy and then do a barrel roll, which will get any of them in the any anywhere near the vicinity. It will pull them in with a magnetic force. So we're doing these slow-moving, uh, snake-like uh, pattern flight. So we're flying around, and I'm relearning re the motion controls and getting them completely wrong. You do a barrel roll by uh, spinning by actually uh, taking the stylus and shifting back and forth really fast on the control pad. That starts a that starts a roll. These are pretty simple enemies, but as I go into the next couple of missions, you'll see a little bit more uh, complex movement and controls. Uh, on, one thing you won't see in this is many missions that have bosses. Uh, that are not, they're like mini bosses. They're, they, they look like uh, saucers, flying saucers over a base or whatever, and they're usually sh shooting a giant laser beam all the time. And by doing that, uh, you have to beat all the enemies in the area to, uh, to be able to attack it, and then you have to fly a very specific flight path and then barrel roll into the center of the underside of that UFO. That's how you beat them. That's why I say there's, there's, there's only one way uh, to beat the game, and that's by barrel rolling. And that's why. So here I still there we go. Aim down. There you got it. And we got all three of them. Mission complete. And we're gonna barrel roll on out of there and see what we can uh, what we can do. That's the last of the. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more group. So I think this is a different group. They uh, a different type of enemy. So we'll try that. Plenty of turns left. Let's take them out just in case I overshoot and here we go Beep. yep different type of enemy more of a traditional ship uh, sometimes sometimes missions will have lots of enemies and you have to kill specific enemies within them but in this, in these first couple of missions, the only enemies in the entire area are the ones you're supposed to kill. You'll notice that I, I locked on there, but I didn't. There were multiple lock-on points, so um, yeah. See, when it does that, that whole when it turns from a square or a bracket into a to a diamond, that means you've uh, you've you've you've, mac you've maximally locked on like that and that usually kills the enemy or at least it'll do the most amount of damage that that particular lock-on shot can do uh, in one hit um, there are some enemies that are like the star wolf uh, type enemies and they will roll out of the way so locking on is not very useful okay mission complete so that's the first mission we're gonna do one more and so show a bit of the story now, when you first play through the game the first time, there's there's branching paths on all of these, on, on, on almost every mission, there's a branched path based on the decision you make. But for the first time you play through the game, it actually won't let you make a choice, they're locked. You have to beat the game the first time and get a terrible, terrible, lukewarm ending before you get something called the Key of Destiny, I believe? And that lets you pick different options as you go through the game. But the, the, the first ending that they choose, the first of nine end, end, endings, you have, to, you have to do all the way through. Also, another thing on this game that you can't do that's a little inconvenient is you can't stop in the middle of it. And considering that this game is actually a relatively long game, it's kind of inconvenient. There, see, it's locked there. I'm going to try and click it. Yeah, nothing. Can't do it. So we're going to have to contact our best friend of the whole wide universe, Slippy. Which we'll do on the battlefield, because why not? Now this is a really bad situation. When we go into the mission you'll see that, there, that the Great Fox is completely surrounded and, and, and Fox is literally too far away to do anything about it. And so 
this second mission provides a way to learn how to use the missiles. Uh, the missiles that the uh, Great Fox can shoot at whole groups of enemies. Taking them out in one shot, you don't even have to engage them with your ship. But you don't get a lot of miss uh, missiles uh, during your flight, so you have to be picky and pick and pick and choose how to use them. All right, so here we go. We're gonna jump into the scene. I'm just gonna explain about the uh, the missiles. Now, I don't have any missiles right now, but there's a bunch on the on the playing field. All these enemies are gonna be hightailing it for the Great Fox, and so there's. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to use missiles because there's literally no way we can get there in time. Fox's ship can't go through that red area, which you'll see in just a moment. I'll try and do that, and uh, he won't be able to. Another interesting mechanic that you won't get to see on these videos is that you can actually fly your ship through um, certain things, and it will extend your range. So if you fly through the Great Fox on the map you can actually increase your distance. So you can actually slightly diverge your flight path to increase the total distance. All right, so we're gonna shoot down some guys here. Obviously we have to get the closest ones just to be safe. And I would like to shoot that big group of five, but sadly the, uh, the, the, the one with two is, is much closer. The good news is is that uh, the the more enemies there are, the easier they are usually. Uh, when you only have one or two enemies, they're usually very difficult enemies. Okay, they're getting really close. But Slippy's here to save the day, and we're gonna get to try uh, try him out. Even though we could do it with Fox, we're gonna do it with Slippy just to try it out. But let's first let's deal with these uh, these enemies. We got two missiles. Let's take some out. Let's take some guys out here. Now, actually, Slippy and Fox are actually close enough we could do this. We could take them out without using our missiles, but I'm going to use the missiles here. So the, the closest one, and we're probably going to get the next closest one too. Or not, we'll take the three on, we'll take the three on and we'll use Slippy. And just in case he misses, we're going to get Fox in there too. I have to draw the line a couple times uh, to, to get the best possible angle here. So... Drawing, on, there we go. Drawing on the stylus pad is not the most precise thing in the world either. All right. The good news is is that that uh, the enemy is going to notice both of our paths, and so I will get to pick and choose which in, which uh, character I use to take on this enemy. And I'm going to use Slippy this time just for a change of pace to show that that the ships are different. Slippy's is distinct in that he has very low boost. He can't boost very long. He can't roll very long. And he has no lock-on capabilities. But he has a lot of bombs, so I'm going to be using bombs a lot here. Now, I didn't kill any of the enemies I was trying to kill. Uh, but, uh... We'll see what we can do with uh, with other stuff. Let's find those. There's, some, there's one. Take him down, Slippy. See, I'm trying to lock on, but there's no lock-on capabilities. So i got to just be good with aim. There he goes. And let's try another bomb here. See if we can get closer this time. I think it looks like it's going to be the in the middle there. And I'm looking around. Maybe it's these guys. Right there. Fire away. Oh, we got both. So I just have to go in there, get closer, and then and barrel roll to get those items. And I'll be done with the mission. There they are, right? Coming in, coming in hot. Spin. Mission complete. Alright, so Slippy takes them down and we are done with this mission. With two turns to spare, this is probably about as good as you could do it. It gets much, much, much harder uh, as the game progresses. And that's a, that's a look at uh, Star Fox Command. That's what it's like. Uh, you should try it out if you, haven't, if you don't already have the game. And you might just enjoy playing it on the Wii U because you can get much higher quality this way. Uh, now, at this point, I want to mention that uh, if you're not interested in playing the game but you are interested in the story, there I have made a website online called Star Fox Command, all the words. You can find it listed on the Crystal Archive or go to sfc.crystalarchive.com. Sfc 
crystalarchive.com. That will let you read the entire story, and, and there are links between the choices, so you can jump to different endings and different story points, and you can read through the entire text of the game. We, we exhaustively went through all this dialogue uh, in between missions, and some during missions, uh, to show this stuff. So we're going to end it here as we get to the next choice that we don't have a choice about. And here it comes. We're going we're gonna to look and see what we're going to do next. We could be going to Vichina uh, to support, support General Pepe. So we're going to try and find General Pepe, looks like. That's the, uh, the next step. Or Lucy, actually. Lucy is Pepe's daughter. There are a lot of playable characters in the game. I think something about 15 or 16. So yeah. We can only go to Facina. So that's where we're going to end it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time on the Crystal Archive. I'm Mr. Crystal. Send any comments and questions to mrcrystal at gmail.com. Thanks.